Some years ago, I had some neighbors that had an incident with a water leak that flooded their home and absolutely ruined the interior. They were at work all day, and had they known about it earlier, they could have certainly mitigated the damage. Instead, there was extensive damage that required months to repair while they lost the use of their home. Ever since then, I've been thinking about how such a thing could be avoided. Now, it's always good practice to shut off your water when you're gone for any extended period of time, like when you're on vacation or are away from home for a few days. But it's certainly not very practical to shut off your main water valve every day while you're at work or just out for the day, or at least it's not very convenient. And it would sort of preclude the possibility of running a washing machine or dishwasher for a couple of hours while you're gone. So it seems that the solution would be to have a way to monitor water flow while we're not at home. Now, there are expensive ultrasonic flow meters that can be clamped onto your existing water supply line to measure water flow. And there are expensive uh, electronically controlled valves integrated with a flow meter that will automatically shut off the water if it thinks water is being used when it shouldn't. But I was trying to figure out a way to very inexpensively monitor water usage and then somehow notify me if water was being used when the house wasn't occupied. The first and most difficult problem, of course, is actually sensing that water is being consumed. And I definitely didn't want to cut the main water line to insert a flow meter or anything like that. What occurred to me was that just about any home has a water meter that the municipality uses for billing. In my particular case, I've got an analog meter with a bright red needle on the dial. So I already have a good flow meter. And it got me thinking that all I needed to do was detect the motion of that needle to know that water is flowing. So this is the basis of the project I have in mind. This is going to involve image capture and some image processing for sure. So it sounds like a good job for that ESP32 camera module that we had a look at in a previous video. In this video, I'll document the first steps I'm taking toward a solution. First, we'll want to capture pictures of the water meter with a needle on the dial in different positions. I want to keep things simple, so we'll use serial communication between the ESP32 module and my PC to transfer images. We'll start off with the Arduino sketch from the ESP32 camera web server example we looked at previously and just modify it to suit our needs. Let's set the output format for RGB uh, 888. This will give us 8 bits per component for red, green, and blue for each pixel. And since we don't need a high resolution image to detect the moving needle, Let's set the capture resolution to 96 by 96 pixels. This should be enough, and quite frankly, we don't want to process millions of pixels on the ESP32 board. Now, for capturing frame buffer contents, we'll use the serial interface to receive a command to trigger a capture sequence. This way, we can write a Python script running on a PC to trigger the image capture on the ESP32 and then read the samples and pipe the data to a file. I'll share the code I uh, wrote for this, including the Arduino uh, IDE sketch for the ESP32 and the Python code running on my PC, which I will uh, show in this video as well. Now, just going to the serial data reader Python script that will run on the PC for a second. Uh, this is an experimental setup, so I have hard-coded values uh, all over my code, so please excuse the sloppiness. This serial reader code initiates the ESP32 image capture and serial data transfer and dumps the data to a file, one separate file for each image. I use start and end keywords from the serial stream produced by the ESP32 camera module and the sketch we wrote to identify the start and end of the image data. Now we're ready to grab data from the ESP32 board using the sketch we uploaded along with the serial reader script. 
we want to capture the images under realistic conditions so we have good data to, to uh, develop a solution with. I put together this ghetto setup with the ESP32 camera fastened to a spring clamp that's grabbing onto the copper pipe here, positioning the camera for a good view of the meter. You can see the needle rotating, indicating water is flowing somewhere. In this case, I had a running faucet. The PC is capturing a sequence of images with the needle in various positions, and I'm satisfied that we have enough samples. Now that we've captured enough images of the meter, dial, and needle, we will want to ensure the integrity of the images we captured and actually see what we've got. This Python code takes the image files generated by the serial reader code and displays them. Um, one thing to note is that the ESP32 frame buffer output per pixel is actually BGR rather than RGB. So I'm rearranging the ordering of the pixel data so it gets displayed properly. That took me a while to figure out as originally something just didn't look right with the images but I'm glad I sorted that out. Uh, we'll also have to take this into account as we're doing processing on the ESP32. You can see as we run the script, the sequence of images we captured over time and how the needle is moving. This is going to be perfect test material as we prototype some sort of needle motion detection scheme. So that's what I've done so far. It took quite a bit of thought and experimentation, so I figured it was worthy of a standalone video that folks could reference for their own projects. Again, I'll have links to the code available in the description for you to use. I hope you found this helpful and interesting. My next step is to prototype a method to detect a needle and then to determine its state of motion. I'll share uh, what I come up with in, in a future video. Until next time, have fun and keep tinkering.